Welcome back to Fast Money. Is the next catalyst for Bitcoin about to hit the market? Maybe so. Blockchain ETFs are beginning to bubble up. Our Bob Bassani is live at the New York Stock Exchange with the details. Hey, Bob. Yes and no, Melissa. So there was a huge backlog of Bitcoin-themed ETFs and registration, but they've disappeared. Now, there are two new blockchain-themed ETFs beginning trading tomorrow, but remember, these ETFs are not investing in Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies. They're focused on companies that will most likely benefit from the blockchain phenomenon. So, for example, investors are clamoring for some way to invest in the blockchain, but there haven't been any opportunities. So there are very few publicly traded companies that have substantial revenues in blockchain. That's been a big problem. So, for example, the Reality Shares Next Gen Economy ETF, that's what's trading tomorrow. That's going to invest in companies like SAP and Overstock and Hitachi and Accenture. But blockchain's not the primary business of any of those companies, so it's unlikely they're going to have a big impact on Bitcoin volumes or on volatility. Still, investors will have to make do for the moment since at least five ETF companies have withdrawn their Bitcoin-related ETFs in just the last couple of weeks, including Van Eck, ProShares, First Trust, Direction, and exchange-listed Funds Trust. Now, these ETFs would have owned Bitcoin outright or Bitcoin futures, and several companies like ProShares and First Trust had several Bitcoin ETFs long and short plays on Bitcoin. But the firm said the filings were withdrawn at the request of the SEC. So remember in September, Melissa, the SES, the SEC asked several of these firms to withdraw their applications until Bitcoin futures had started. Well, after the futures started trading, they resubmitted their applications. Now they're asking them to withdraw it again. So it seems like the goal is changing here. But the theme seems to be right now the SEC is concerned about liquidity and about valuation. In other words, even with futures contracts, the SEC is worried about the big price swings and the volume of trading. And we saw that today. See where we're ending up here with Bitcoin. Melissa, back to you. I think you should do all your reports with music behind you, Bob. It really adds <laughs> it's to the like content. It's yeah, like it's, 1985 it's, in here. It's like we're at the limelight like downtown. A, <laughs> <or something. laughs> what a reference. I just, who knew? Speak from I just dated myself. I, right I, I withdraw <laughs> that statement. I, I withdraw that. <laughs> it's already done. Bob, thanks. Okay, Bob Bisani at the NYSE. Our next guest is no stranger to the ETF space as he has helped launch and develop more than 60 of them. His blockchain ETF, the first of its kind, is set to launch tomorrow. Let's welcome Christian Magoon, the founder and CEO of Amplify ETFs. Christian, great to have you with us. Um, and just to put a distinction on this, this is the first actively managed ETF. There is a passively managed ETF that will also launch tomorrow, but we're talking right now about the actively managed one. The thing that strikes me, Christian, about this is that, you know, when I first heard this, I thought, how can that be? There aren't really many blockchain companies out there. When I took a list, look at the list of your top holdings, um, we could maybe put a full screen up of them. Blockchain is not the primary driver of any of these companies for the most part. So why launch an ETF now? Well, we think the blockchain technology is going to transform kind of the leaders in investment and research into that technology. So, Melissa, we're trying to skate where the puck uh, is going to be in the future. So we're looking at that uh, investment and research as leading indicators of who's going to win that disruptive race, much like investing in the early days of Internet technology would have led you to companies like Amazon. Right. I mean, you got Citigroup up there, and I get that a company, a financial services company, will be using blockchain in the future. But, I mean, to use your analogy, I don't know, it would sort of be like investing in, um, you know, an underwriter ahead of the Internet boom. I mean, I don't really get the direct correlation there. I mean, Citi, you're going to take a look at it, and it's going to trade on, reven on trading revenues and this and that and, and not blockchain or its investments in blockchain. Well, I disagree with you in the sense that Citigroup is one of the five largest investors in blockchain technology in the world. If and when they monetize some of that investment and make that announcement, whether it's a business line, a spinoff, an IPO, I think they will monetize and you'll see it in their stock price. So uh, we think that getting in early uh, in these companies Granted, it's not as pure as we'd like, but we've taken an active approach to adjust the investment strategy in the universe of companies as the industry matures. We think this is a better idea than buying maybe a privately uh, offered security that's look, working on blockchain or making a bet on one or two companies. We think the diversification makes sense. How much due diligence do you do, does your team do? at Amplify to make sure that this is not a company that's simply sticking blockchain in their mission statement or blockchain on their name. Yeah, it's a great point. Um, it's one of the reasons we didn't want to go with an index. We think index 
rules can be fooled and you can see some of these uh, blockchain companies in name only. Uh, we have qualification standards and then there's a portfolio management team that is looking at the news, looking at the company business plan as it relates to blockchain so we don't get caught in those traps. Again, that's why we think actively managed is the responsible way in the ETF space to invest in blockchain. But within the qualifications, it's not a percentage of revenues derived from blockchain technology or percent of revenues derived from, from the use of blockchain as a savings or anything like that. I mean, no, there's, a, there's really a bit of qual I mean, there's just a little bit of a qualitative assessment of whether or not these companies should be considered blockchain companies. Yeah, it's really a relative comparison. So we're investing in the leading companies in terms of research and development, in terms of public and private investment, and in terms of current revenue coming in. So uh, these are the leaders in those categories. Again, we think that's a leading indicator of, of the companies that are going to monetize blockchain going into the future. But right now, there isn't a, a basic 50 or 70 percent revenue hurdle that a company has to meet. The industry and the technology is just too young. All right, Christian, we're going to leave it there. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Christian Magoon, that ETF will be BLOK, uh, starts trading tomorrow. Actively traded um, ETF. What do you think? So, so I own two of those names. I own yeah. Square and I own Overstock. And I could see Overstock being the play on blockchain. But I think the big problem for Chris and this ETF is that I don't think people differentiate between the coins and the actual technology. So it could be a headwind, even though I do believe that blockchain is not going away. A lot of these coins could be flavor of the month. Well, to be clear, I mean, Christian knows a lot about ETFs. He's yeah. been in the space a long time, and I, I'm sure if they put this together, they've done it with a level of transparency. I think ultimately that's what this comes down to. Investors are trying to extrapolate who's going to be a player tomorrow. We have seen what's going on with Square Stock. Whether, you know, it would be good, though, for these guys to be able to say, the blended average revenue these guys are getting across the space is, is 11% or something. Um, because I think it's important to have hard data to really determine who's in that space. Uh, but ultimately, that's where investors want to figure out who's doing the most. Would you be interested in buying this ETF? Me personally? Mm. No. I think to Steve's point, I, mean, if you, I think you own Overstock is the proxy name. I mean, Steve's been spot on. This thing went from 25 to 90. It's trading 70 now. If you're looking for the beta play, OSTK is probably the way to do it, as Steve has said for quite some time. Up next, final trade. You know, most people that we talk to feel like they've worked hard to save money their whole life, making monthly contributions to 401ks and IRAs, just like they were told to do. But they're frustrated because they don't have enough money for retirement. If you can relate to any of this, the first thing I want to tell you, it's not your fault. Everyone has been programmed to think and invest the wrong way from a very young age. Many of the decisions that you've been taught to make are designed to make Wall Street wealthy, not you. In the beginning, I was skeptical. Once I went through the Online Trading Academy curriculum, I made a nice profit. When you add it up together, it's probably somewhere around $25,000, $30,000 in a few months. Call 1-888-727-6139 right now to sign up for a free half-day class near you. Plus, you'll get our free Wall Street Insider Kit, which includes two educational investing videos.